All right, everyone, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Jack Sports Talk and Entertainment. Someone asked me, when you hear this music, do you play air guitar? I say, who doesn't? Oh, it was a long night last night. We had a uh, had the painters here the other day, and I mentioned that, and we took out the carbon monoxide detector, and the problem was they hit it. So when you pull it out of the wall and the battery's low, it beeps. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, it was beeping from 3 to about 4 o'clock in the morning before I finally found it. So... We got up early and stayed up early and just decided, you know, we weren't going to do a video today, but let's churn one out because I got something I want to talk about. There's three players that are on the current Giants active roster that I really feel like this is their make or break season. It would have been easy to select Daniel Jones. It would have been easy to select Saquon Barkley. But those players we already know about. I mean, it's just the way it is. So without those two, if those two pistons aren't firing in the engine, the engine's not going to go very far. But these are other players. And and people are going to look at the title and they're going to say, well, that's just rude. It's put up a shut up time. No, it really is. It's time to show your wares. You're you're going into your your big seasons. You you are you are going into your make or it's, it's basically your make or break seasons. That's all it is. And it's not disparaging them. It's just, honestly, if you've been in the league for X amount of years, it's it's time to move on and move forward. And the first player I want to talk about is the Georgia Bulldog. Is Lorenzo Carter, 6'5", 255 pounds, linebacker. A lot of promise Carter had. He had a lot of promise coming out. He, he, he had a fairly good rookie season. I mean, his rookie season... Was of course in 2018, 40 tackles, I believe he had, four sacks, a couple pass defenses. And you kind of hoped that he was going to progress into 19. And so then in 19, he had had another slow, I wouldn't say a slow season, but he had a, and I'm not even going to call it a complete regression. I'm going to say he had an even keel season. He he his, he kind of his talent kind of flatlined. Not, and I shouldn't even say it flatlined. It it kind of just stayed at the same even plane corner, sort of kind of he had in nineteen. Forty two tackles, four and a half sacks, five pass defenses. And there was rumblings back in nineteen that maybe Carter is not going to fill the bill for the New York Giants in the linebacker position. And then the twenty twenty COVID season came around. And of course, you know what? He showed something in camp. He showed an aggressiveness. He showed that he could potentially have some ability to man the starting position for a few for a few years at, at a high level. And then the injury occurred. And so you have to sit there and think to yourself. And there's two there's two rationales in my mind about this. Did he excel in training camp because he kept continuously went up against the same players day in and day out? And then even when we had the scrimmages or whatever, like or the preseason scrimmages, that he was still going up against those same players because he knows, so he knows their tendencies and he knows their abilities. I mean, because he did show some promise in the five games he played in 19, but he still only had 14 tackles and a sack before he got hurt. So I'm not, I'm not saying, it, I mean, he was, again, to me, his career arc was starting to go up but not exponentially. So honestly, this is year four. It's time. It's time to show that you earned your spot. You, well, he will earn a spot on the roster, but it's time to show that he is ready to progress or move forward in his career. I feel bad for him because of the fact that he's going to have to deal with the injury coming back from that. But you can't use things as excuses. And, I, and he's not. So, I mean, you never hear him come out and say, well, this is this and this and that and this and that. But So he's not using it as an excuse. But from an outside perspective looking in, these are things that need to be discussed about Lorenzo Carter and his his position with on the roster. The good thing about Lorenzo is, or the good thing for Lorenzo is right now is, we don't really have any great linebackers outside of Blake Martinez and maybe Ojolari. We have average linebackers at best. We have to hope someone steps up. We have to hope one of the rookies from last year turns the corner. So we'll we'll see what happens. Third player. I said third player. Second player on my list. It's going to be B.J. Hill. 6'3", 311 pounds. Defensive lineman. North Carolina State. 
I liked BJ coming out of college. I liked him tremendously. I felt that he could fill a need on the line, and I felt that he could have the versatility to be potentially a pass rusher and a defensive stop and defensive run stopper. And if you go by his rookie season, you know, he had 34 tackles, five and a half sacks. He kind of filled that bill a little bit. And when he played, he didn't play. He wasn't playing complete numbers of snaps. I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't complaining. He wasn't playing eighty, ninety percent of snaps. It, it was in a. It was in a very limited sample. And I, I shouldn't even say limited sample. But he had. A, he actually had a good sample in playing time, in eighteen. But he all of a sudden his playing time started to regress, and a lot of people would say, "Well, it's because of Loren, uh, because of uh, uh, Leonard Williams." So in 19, he was again playing 16 games, but this time he went down to 32 tackles and only a sack. And you can say that, you know, we can say, well, Dexter Lawrence came in and, and, and Leonard Williams came in and this. So and we had Dalvin Tomlinson, so he didn't really get the opportunity to play. And I think that's bullshit. That's a, that's a bullshit remark from fans that don't watch. Talent gets on the field. Plain and simple. Talent gets on the field. They make room for you. And B.J. Hill's snap counts had gone down exponentially each year, each season, to the fact that he began played in 16 games, had 31 tackles, and one sack last year. I'm not, I'm not saying that he can't. I'm, I just don't think I, I don't. He's a hybrid type guy. He is a. A guy that you don't know, like I said, if you want to, is he a run stopper? Is he going to rush the quarterback? If you're going to have him to rush the quarterback right now, he only had two sacks in the last two years. So I'm not seeing that. And he's not he's not a run stopper in the mold of uh, Dexter Lawrence or Dalvin Tomlinson. I think he could potentially be a good backup player, a good backup player for the you know in the line. But I'm not seeing I'm I'm not seeing it right now. Where it's it's this it's this you know everyone has it's amazing there's I shouldn't say everyone there's there's a segment of fans and they're probably the same same segment of segment of fans that will think Daniel Jones can do no wrong have the same feeling about B.J. Hill you really haven't shown me anything but you can you could do no wrong <laughs> I mean that's the way that's the way I see it and it's interesting because of the fact that. If you take a look, like I say, if you take a look at the totality of his career the last two years, his snap count has gone down. Why? Because there's better talent ahead of him. So is it going to be a Cam Fleming situation where we give him the job by default because we have nobody else? I don't think that's the case. Do I think he has talent? Sure. But I don't think he has talent to be a starter. I think he'll always be in a filling guy. And there's nothing wrong with that because, and I've said it before, you can't have 53 guys in your roster that are all, all that are all all pros. That's not possible. But you want that to be the case. That's not possible. But I don't think he's ever going to reach the promise that we thought we had with for him three years ago. But there's nothing wrong with that. He, every, there's spots on the roster for a reason. Last player on the list, it's going to be Will Hernandez, 6'2", 327 pounds out of UTEP, 25 years old. Will has, had, Will has been interesting, to say the least. And, 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 I've, and I've talked about Will Hernandez ad nauseum. I mean, I, I think Will is the kind of guy that, um, I think he's just an interesting guy. When he came out of UTEP, he, he, he had this nasty streak about him. He, he, was, he was going to be a road paver. He started all 16 games last I mean, his rookie season at right guard. You know, he, he was paired up with Nate Solder. And I found it interesting that he had a steady rookie season. And I was actually very impressed with him during his rookie season because I felt that his his control, his mindset, his his attitude, his demeanor really fit in with the Giants line. And even as a rookie, you were kind of like, well, you know, he's missed some. He's missing some assignments. He's missing some blocks. He's hanging Nate out to dry a little bit, but that's okay because of the fact that he, you know, he's a rookie. He's going to progress. But there was a natural ability you kind of saw with him. Then season two rolled around, and season two was interesting because of the fact that it got a little worse. He that that 
cool hand Luke demeanor kind of left him. He, he was starting to get unsportsmanlike penalties. He was kind of turned into a hothead. He, was, he lost that control that made him special. Not special, but made him a, an, an okay player as a rookie. And there's nothing wrong with being coming in as an okay player. But you just had, you know, you, it, you could just see kind of, it's like he kind of regressed a little. And his ability to, you know, to, to clear the way on the run was not there. His pass blocking skills has started to deteriorate a little bit. He, they, you know, and like I said, year two, the league gets film on you. They find your deficiencies and they attack those deficiencies. And I think that's what the league did to Will Hernandez in 2019. And then 2020 rolls around. 2020 was just kind of a weird season. But once again, he was still, it just something still wasn't there. That nasty streak was gone. He tried, he looked like he tried to play more in control. But all of a sudden now, I find it interesting that the two tackles that have played with him and Solder and Thomas had issues. All, both had issues during the seasons, their seasons with Will, teaming with Will. But as soon as Shane Lemieux entered the game, everything seemed to change for Andrew Thomas. It really did. You can watch the tape. It something seemed to click. And I've said it before. I think a lot of the problems that Nate Solder had, not all of them, but a good portion of the problem were because of Will Hernandez. Your line mate can either help you or they could hinder you. And if you miss an assignment as an interior lineman and you hang out your tackle to dry, it's, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Because there was a couple of plays, and I pointed it out before in 19, you can tell that uh, that you could tell that Will missed the block. That he was probably supposed to kick out and he was probably supposed to block the gentleman to the left side. And he went into the interior and started helping out the center. Which in, which in turn left him left Nate Solder to handle two players. And Nate usually tried to take the outside rush, which all of a sudden left the inside rush because our old buddy Will was we missed his assignment. And that's what I talk about about hanging your tackle out to dry. So this is the this is the year for Will. Will's got to prove something. Will's got to prove that he can work with this line. Because like I said, I do find it interesting that the play of Andrew Thomas was exponentially better once Nate was out of the lineup. And he was paired with another rookie, which is kind of shocking to me. So can Will turn the corner? We hope so. Because we're going to need him to start on this line. Because you, you could talk about all the things that the Giants have done for agency, but the line is still going to be an issue. I don't know if it's going to be an issue, but it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a question mark. And I think that's the way we got to look at it. And like I said, I'm not saying these are bad guys are bad players. I'm just saying it's time for them to turn the corner, and it's time to to show the Giants that when contract time comes up, that they're going to be the players that the Giants want to keep on this organization. And I got them this time with the online Big Blue. We're bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talking entertainment. And as always, if you like, if you subscribe, ring the bell. You know what I mean? That'd be awesome.